Day one, you are precious. Your story begins with someone else. Long before and after you were born, people were talking about you. They talked about your gender, your name, whom you may look like. Maybe you were planned. Maybe you were welcomed into this world. Maybe you were prayed for. Or maybe, like me, you were unplanned, and at least to some degree, or to some people, unwelcome. We are all born in varying degrees of beauty and tragedy, each of us with a different allotment of both. Your narrative, your story, was being told before your life began, and the contribution of others to your story will never stop. You are constantly interacting, shaping, and redirecting the way your own story will unfold. Your story emerges and ends somewhere. It's in the goodness of God where your story truthfully emerges. The very life and breath of God is imparted into your being. Consider the redefining moment of your salvation and onward maturity. God's Word fills you with light. It's alive. It's joy. It's unexplainable. It splits apart your soul and spirit in an instant. It simultaneously judges your thoughts and attitudes. It urges you forward to win the race. Hope is set before you, eclipsed by God's glory. In a glorious transformation from the carnal to the divine, sin and its desire are no longer enthroned. When you remember our God, what do you think of Him? Remember Him as the standard for which everything good in life is measured. Your story, no matter the allotment of beauty and tragedy, is always bearing the image of the goodness of God. God places His trust in you to show Him as He is. The enemy focuses on making God less than He is. Using the voice in your own mind, how often do you contend with words? You don't measure up. You're less than. I'm incompetent. I can't do this. The voice accuses God more than it accuses you. God cannot step out of perfection and holiness to lead you into a place that He cannot keep you. God cannot think to abandon, harm, or forget you. God cannot be less than any person, any time, any space, any place, or anything. Such things as unholy and being unholy is the one thing that God cannot do. God created you. He sees you and everything He put in you. He refuses to credit your sin nature with your victory. You are not less than, and neither is God. You are wonderfully and beautifully made. You were made to join Him in life. You are an image bearer. In Genesis 1 and 2, when God made the world and your ancestors, He said it is very good. Imagine how good it had to have been. This was before the face of evil showed up and showed out as the absence of all that is good and holy, all that is God. The consequential invasion and supplanting of God's divine nature with the sin nature twisted the image of God on earth. Make no mistake, you have eyes, ears, arms, legs, but more importantly, you have a conscience something in you that cries foul when sin hurts you. Whether you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ or not, the world still grapples with right from wrong. The world cannot rightly discern apart from God. It is clear they know something is wrong. The sin nature could not destroy the image of God, but Satan is working hard to twist and make it unrecognizable in you and in the world. You are His image bearer, regardless of what sin has done to you. God is never truly supplanted or brought low by evil's accusation or humanity's unbelief. God is never less than. He is the way, the truth, and the life for all who will come to Him. God does not show out, entrap, or manipulate with power. He is the whisperer. He is the lover of your soul, calling you to join Him in quietness and truth. Your life is an offspring of worship to your King, to your Heavenly Father. 
The world needs your gifts. There is only one who is fully and truly good. The psalmist writes, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Psalm 34, 8. The Lord God invites you to see him clearly so you can reflect him clearly. Be not ashamed, bear his image well.